Now, research shows that a negative work environment contributes to greater odds of having cardiovascular risk factors among full-time workers and so supervisor behavior plays an important role. We will be looking at employees right on the show this morning. It's World Tuberculosis Day. Nigeria records 200,000 new TB cases in one year. And like always, we will be reviewing the front page of major dailies across the country. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful morning right here for us. And it's good to know that you are on the other side, part of the show as well. Yeah, morning to you, Messi. You're looking you uh, radiant as always. Thank you. I trust you had a wonderful night rest. Well, I feel better. That's the most important thing. You know, there's sleeping. nothing like um, sleeping well. And because if you don't get so much rest or so much sleep, the next day you might just start off maybe having a headache or just start your day on a very low-key mood. So there's always an emphasis on I'm trying to sleep very well. You I know, sometimes, uh, usually, I just think that uh, we take health for granted and little things. Yesterday, mm. I, read, I read a story, you know, I saw news where someone died because they had stomach ache and oh, this young man. Ache. Yes. So, well, I, I just think that it's as much as, you know, we pay attention to work and every other thing, it's also important that we pay attention to our health. Yeah, good thing we'll talk about um, a health issue on the show this morning. Today is what tuberculosis, but we'll get into all of that uh, much later. But, Mercy, what is trending in uh, the country? Yesterday, there was a massive fire uh, at the popular Akpoma Bridge, uh, Lagos Island, uh, here in Lagos. And uh, Lagos, um, you know, there was a bit of a, tr not a bit, there was much traffic along that um, route yesterday. You know you know how busy the Akbomong area is. Uh, that's like uh, where there's so much um, activities, uh, marketing activities, uh, commercial activities are uh, going on there. And uh, Mercy, this is not the first time that we've had um, cases of um, fire around that particular location, Lagos Island Market. Almost every time there's always some fire outbreak, uh, you know, if it's not Akbomo, it's uh, within the Lagos Island metropolis. Uh, but yesterday was just one too many. Mm. But I, I think we'll probably just, you know, take that track and when we return, okay, there's a track. we'll continue okay. with the conversation right here. Please stay with us. Okay, let's take that then. Lagos wakes up to this disaster. Traders at the popular Akpongbo scramble to salvage what they can. Hey, bros, bros. Sorry. The fire opens up a portion of the bridge Signal a danger as firemen from the state and other officials try to extinguish the flame. Traffic is rerouted from air to other roads. The result is this horrific gridlock. Akpongbon Bridge is cordoned off as the state emergency agency, led by the permanent secretary, Femi, was signed to Lu Tok Tov for the evacuation of containers under this bridge. We are removing the containers. We are moving in to the source of the inferno. And with that, there is no casualty, there is no mortalities, and we are on top of the challenges. Uh, however, we have a stakeholders meeting with all the people that were involved, federal ministry, Lagos State Ministry of Works, Lagos State Environment, and we have decided that we've given them seven days ultimatum. After this seven days ultimatum, anyone, anyone, any container that is found wanting will be removed. The representative of the Minister of Works and Alson arrives in company of other officials disappointed at the damage. Let me repeat myself and make it clear, lucidly clear. From today, the 30th of March, every occupant under our bridges, all our bridges, we have over 20 bridges in Lagos alone, should move 
they have been given seven day ultimatum to move away. After the seventh day, the task force will hand on any recastrant element we find under the bridge. So we are working with the Ministry of Environment uh, that will be responsible for ensuring that the market people that need to be evacuated will be evacuated. Those that don't need to be around will be moved and I'm sure they will find a location for them. But from a transport point of view, it's very important that we evacuate this place. Safety is paramount. We need to think of the safety of our people first and then we can then look at other things later. It is not clear what caused the fire, but officials have advised motorists to use alternative routes as Akpongbon Bridge would have to be shut, integrity tests carried out before repair works can begin. All right, uh, welcome back uh, from that report. You just saw what happened yesterday at the popular Akpongbon Bridge uh, in Lagos. Uh, yesterday, the fire that happened underneath the bridge. Uh, from the report, uh, the Lagos State Government says um, an integrity test, Messi, uh, will be carried out and... Uh, uh, they have actually asked them resident and commuters uh, to use um, alternative routes. I can imagine uh, the traffic that would be on around that area for quite some time. Yes, also interesting is the fact that the federal government uh, has also given traders and other illegal occupants on the, uh, over the bridge in Lagos, you know, seven-day ultimatum to vacate uh, that space or they would have to face, you know, forceful vacation and all of that. But um, according to the report, I mean, we, we really cannot, mm. whatever cost that fire has not been yes, established. Not at all. But that's yeah. what happens when you have, you know, markets and activities around. Usually in some states, you see the issue of having street trading, uh, you know, very dangerous issue especially on our roads really really sad so mm -hmm. i think it's a two-way thing on the other hand you want to look at you know the response time for i mean of the fire service because we usually yeah. we cannot as much as we say yes let's carry out this campaign and sensitization to avoid this fire because if we constantly educate the people educate ourselves on how to avoid this incident then we will not get to that part. So it's called the preventive. We need to be proactive mm. to ensure that there's constant sensitization. Find a way to pass the message via the different medias that are available, uh, the radio, TV, jingle, communicating a language that people would understand, understand. Uh, practice that, or practices and behaviors that people need to you know, stay away from. But every day you move around you know, the city of Lagos, you move around Nigeria, you see that we're just a disaster. Mm. We're waiting to happen. Anywhere it can just happen because you see some behavior and practices that yeah. are you know not very um, all right but um, let's see how all of this pans out it just boils down to the same issue that we keep talking about at the end of the day bring yes it, it is up. and that, yeah still on what you mentioned that aspect of um, evacuating people I wonder why people well let me not wonder sometimes the situation of the country because when you say you wonder why you like uh, what alternatives are you going to give to them you know most people they most people live there Mm. Under, under those bridges. Some people even trade under those bridges. And uh, I know it's not the ideal situation. It's not the ideal thing for people to be trading or living under the bridge. But, you know... Survival. The world would be survival. But before you think about survival, it's like for every time you have... Mm. Have you heard every time you have a, a um, the heavy duty vehicle falling on the road? You know, mm. sometimes they are conveying very sensitive product, and then you yeah. hear reports and you see pictures. It's not just hear a report mm. of you know some persons, residents around going to scoop Sco petrol, and you say because you need to survive. I mean, you have just seen seen a means of survival. But before you think about survival, uh, you also need to think about safety. Mm. The dead cannot be talking about line. survival. Mm. So when you're dead, you're dead and gone. So mm. before you begin to think about how to survive, you also need to think about safety. how to leave. First. And that's why I say that there's a lot of work to be done. We need mm. to constantly create. I feel like if we are more preventive, if we take a way of preventing, we'll mm. not get to a point where we have to react and then begin to make excuses why we haven't evacuated. People need to understand constantly there need to be information well, orientation. Be because I know that for place. every state there's, you know, Ministry of Information and Orientation and what National have you. Orientation, we yes. need to constantly, even the fire service department. Mm. I, I think that if we you know, adopt that approach of educating people, letting people understand the practices and behavior, like I'd mentioned earlier on, that they should not be involved in to ensure that, you know, we have to prevent. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, oh, to avoid malaria and what have you, 
you know, mosquito bites and how, what, what have you, clear the bushes around, clean the gutters, and sure that everywhere is clean. It's just simple, mm. right? But it's quite unfortunate uh, that has happened, but I'm hoping that everyone involved would actually, you know, learn a lesson. The government would act. That order has been given by the federal government. The yes, federal yes. government is interested in this case. And uh, let's see how that pans out. Let's see what happens. But safety first before survival. That's what I think. <laughs> well, I agree. I agree. And I just hope all the integrity tests will be done so that we will not be also be prone to danger again when that um, bridge is reopened. But let's move on to some other thing that is trending. Uh, Timmy Dakolo is in the news. Messy. You know, he said something about bread. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't blame people, Mercy. You know, he, he, he's why would you blame Tim? He's an artist. He sings for a living, you know. And uh, he went out to perform at um, some event uh, for the People's Democratic Party. And the next thing, Nigerians, you know how Nigerians would react? And like, they're all like, whoa, 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 why should he be performing? I, I don't think he's done anything wrong. The fact that uh, he decided to, to, to sing or to support any particular person, it is his personal opinion so, so i think i remember sometime last year yes. uh you know somewhere in one supermarket running to timmy de colo and i have a sister who feels like oh timmy de colo should perform at my timmy de colo should perform at you know my wedding and mm. it happens and, and then she said oh that's timmy de colo i've always wanted him to perform you know we need we needed to pull the stunt and however in the supermarket somehow he came out and it was like, okay hi timmy de colo this is me and this is my sister and she really wants you to perform. The mm. truth is, yes, we know that the Nigerians actually uh, yesterday or thereabout, Timmy Dakolo performed mm. when Atiku Abubakar declared his mm -hmm. intention to of, you know, to run for president under the People's um, Democratic, the People's Democratic Party. Party. Of course, former vice president of Nigeria. And a lot of people are saying, oh, there's a lot of tongue wagging. And people are saying, oh, yes, it's, you know, another political you know, period and season and uh, hungry people would always go ahead. So I understand the fact that a lot of persons are disgruntled. You understand that the fact that Nigeria's not working, you feel like uh, for someone like Atiko, he was vice president before, part of the problems that we have faced is also part of it. Why should Timmy Dakolo be associated with him? But you need to understand that he is an artist, just like you have mentioned. Right? He performs, press. you know, that's how, that's how he makes his money. Yes. But you can't take, it's like saying that we have to be selective. So if I have a restaurant right now, mm. Mm, let's say I have a restaurant, a five-star restaurant, I'd like to have that, mm. right? And so you have people coming in. I can't say, if the president walks into my restaurant, I can't All say, right. Buhari, please don't come here. Because you I think be you... can't selective, you have to feed everyone. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. So I'm it's messy. business. Yeah. Business is business. You can't restrict who comes no, in and who can't. doesn't you come in. To, you have to be all And so that's what it is. So I, I, okay. I think that, you know, the, but we need to call for that track and yes it. let's take that and we'll come back and talk some more about it bread <laughs> All right, uh, Timu uh, you know, performing his ever popular uh, great nation at uh, Atiku's, uh, you know, declaration there. And like uh, we were saying before, we took that, uh, you know, clip. Uh, it has sparked outrage. He's a singer. He decided to sing for the, um, the former vice president. This is his decision. I don't think um, if you have a problem with it, just no, but see, meanwhile, <laughs> let's talk about that Great Nation song. I think that's, that's you know, a legendary song. I love it would that continue song so to leave. I remember those days when I used to be on the radio. Mm. It would always be at a time where we have to talk about democracy. We yes. have to do anything about Nigeria. It's always a great song to play. Uh, it's a fantastic song. And, I, I, you know, I, I like to really sit and watch, you know, Timmy Dakolo perform that song sometime, mm. someday. So it's a great one. But like I mentioned, Justin is like you having a business. Mm. You have a petrol station, yes. right? You own a petrol station. I'll I'm sure you like to you. own that one. Ah, yes. Ah, okay. so imagine like you, you own a petrol station. <laughs> <laughs> you own a petrol station and then yes. you have the likes of Atiko coming to patronize you. And you ah. say, you tell your attendants, don't attend to him, you know, because his policies. No, he has, he has, he has to come every day to buy from So me. <laughs> for Timmy Dakolo, that's his craft and that's how he makes his money. Mm. But doesn't necessarily mean that he's endorsing him. I, I don't think that that's an endorsement. 
So you are contracted to do a job. We need to understand what an endorsement or not an endorsement is. It probably might be, he might not be his favorite candidate for the election, but we need to understand. I understand how Nigerians actually feel. That's yeah, because they feel that um, if he doesn't believe or if he isn't endorsing them, article, he would not even go to, uh, perform. Go to perform. So, so I think that th yeah. this is a thing that Nigerians, because... Uh, Recently, you would see some persons who have said they want to become president, they want to become governors, mm -hmm. and what have you. Nigerians have been very bitter. So they find you associating with this person and they say, hey, what's going on? Why are you, why are you in connection? You know, you don't forget the story of Jesus at a time. I mean, you mm. found him a lot of time with, you know, sinners dining and eating. Jesus spent a lot of times eating with sinners and, and having a party. No, I'm not a deaconess, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, that uh, let's not drag to me, Dakolo. He's his craft. Paraventure, you never can tell. Atiku might not be his favorite candidate. He might not be his favorite person, but his business. As long as we live in a, you know, uh, a capitalist system, profit would always be a thing. And so, um, you know, cut him some slack. Yes. To me, uh, you, can, you can decide to sing for whoever you want to sing. That's your profession. That's how you feed your family. That's how you make your money. So if you don't sing, I wonder what else you would be doing, except uh, you're, you're thinking of uh, maybe getting into Nollywood someday. <laughs> 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 All right, those, those are the top trends for this morning. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll be going off the press in a moment to join us again. <laughs> 